So this year so far, we have made a bunch of different chickens and bacons. I've made a few steaks. I've even made a few different versions of burgers. Now over the year, I've learned quite a bit about making plant-based meats. A lot of this stuff was just on my journey to try to discover what makes the best plant-based meat replacements and how you can make them at home. Now during this journey, I've been able to add a lot of stuff to my pantry. Now the sauce stash pantry itself is some of the stuff that you see up here along this shelf, but then I also have a whole other shelf over here on the side and I actually have two different pantries. I have an open pantry and a normal closed pantry in my regular kitchen in my house. I've been adding a lot of different ingredients to it over the year, but I've noticed, and I'm sure you have too, that time and time again, I start to use a lot of the same things for different meat replacements. So today I wanted to talk about just a few things that you can add to your pantry to help you make just about any kind of plant-based meat. So this list is in no particular order. This is just the top 10 things that I think you can add to your pantry that's gonna help you make better meat replacements. So the very first thing on my list is canned chickpeas, also known as graham garbanzo bean, the Egyptian pea, and chana. You can buy them canned, but you can also find them dried. Now they work really well in plant-based meats because they have a very mild flavor and they really help with texture. The chickpeas, when blended and mixed with vital wheat gluten, create pockets and spaces that create a very terrible chicken-like texture known as chickweed, which was created by the blog Avocados and Ales. I've also used it mixed with vital wheat gluten to create my bacon recipe. Now the liquid from a can of chickpeas is what's known as aquafaba. It's commonly used as an egg white replacement because of the way that it can emulsify and act as an egg white and binder in recipes. Number two on my list is nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast contains quite a bit of glutamic acid, which gives it a very strong umami-like flavor, and its flavors are commonly described as nutty or cheesy. It's used a lot of times as a cheese-flavored seasonings on popcorn, fried foods, and tofu scrambles. Nutritional yeast works really well as a seasoning and flavor when making plant-based meats. It works by adding a savory flavor to pretty much any plant-based meat. For number three, we have another yeast, yeast extract. I commonly use Marmite, which is produced by Unilever, but it's also sold under the name as Vegemite, Senovis, and Vitam R. It's an extremely salty, dark brown paste with a very powerful flavor. For use with plant-based meats, you can add it to pretty much any liquid to thin it out to create a flavoring broth, but you can also add it directly to a mixture of TVP or vital wheat gluten to create a very meaty-like substance. I've used it quite a bit in my plant-based bacons, steaks, and burgers. Works really well. If you check out the ingredients list of most commercially available plant-based burgers, like the Impossible Burger and Beyond Burger, you'll commonly see yeast extract listed as an ingredient because of its very meaty-like flavor. Number four on my list, I just introduced to the channel and I have been loving it, and that is mushroom seasoning. Now, mushroom seasoning is another seasoning that's very high in glutamate, and it's commonly referred to as umami seasoning or even like an MSG replacement. It's made by mixing mushroom extract and dried pulverized mushrooms. In Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese cooking, you see it in broths, hot pots. It's made a lot to make a very rich, flavorful soup and stew. I started adding it to all of my plant-based meats to really up that very umami, very savory flavor, and it's worked. It's awesome to have. Number five on my list is TVP, textured vegetable protein. I've talked about this one quite a bit. It's known as textured vegetable protein, textured soy protein, soy meat, or soy chunks. It goes by a lot of different names. You'll commonly see it as an ingredient on loads of different plant-based meats, and you can use it at home to create pretty much any ground beef, ground meat, ground chicken. You can use it to create patties, anything where you need a meat-like texture, and it's very easy to flavor. Number six on my list is gluten. The dried version, vital wheat gluten, can also be used to make what's known as seitan and wheat meat. It's made by washing a wheat flour dough ball until all of the starch granules have been removed. What you're left with is a sticky, gooey substance that is pure gluten that can then be kneaded and cooked to form a very meat-like texture. It can be easily used to create meat replacements on its own, but it works really well when adding to other things to make things denser and chewier like meat. Number seven on the list, and one that I've also recently introduced and am loving, is methyl cellulose. Methyl cellulose is a chemical compound derived from cellulose. It's used as a thickener and emulsifier in various food and cosmetic products, but it's also used as a bulk-forming laxative. 
When using it when making plant-based meats, it has a very unique ability to set harder or tougher when it's heated and melt or soften when it's cold. Number eight on my list to have in your pantry is tapioca starch. Now tapioca starch is the starch that is removed from the roots of the cassava plant. It's commonly used to make breads and puddings, but one of its most popular uses is to create the boba pearls or tapioca pearls that you see very popular in Asian milk teas. When using it in a plant-based meat replacement, it works very well as a binder or filler, but when mixed with different fats and oils like coconut oil, it would create a very fat-like texture, very similar to what you would see like in a pork fat. And I used it in a pulled pork recipe to add fatty bits to a pulled pork sandwich and it worked really well. Number nine on my list and one of my favorites, and you know that I use it all the time, liquid smoke. It's made by condensing smoke into a liquid or the simpler term, distilling wood. It's always used as a flavor additive to add a very smoky flavor to foods without the lengthy process of actually wood fire smoking your foods. Now there are a few things I wanted to add to the list before we get to number 10. Rice paper is something great to have around the house. It stays very long. You could use it as a wrap over like a fake chicken. It also works well to create a fake bacon. Dried soy skin or yuba also works the same as a rice paper where you can use it as a wrap for like fake chickens or fake meats and also works well to create a bacon. Other starches that work well besides tapioca starch would be like a mung bean starch. Works really great as a thickener or egg replacement. Potato starch works really great as a thickener. Now the last item on my list to make meat replacements very easily is canned jackfruit. Now canned young green jackfruit is a perfect meat replacement. You can use it as a chicken replacement, you can use it as a pork replacement, and it makes a very good pulled pork sandwich. Plant-based chefs are really starting to get very innovative with their use of young green jackfruit because it has such a great texture and very mild taste. Now there's a lot of spices and seasonings that I didn't add because a lot of them are pretty basic. As long as you have paprika, some smoked paprika, thyme, cumin, oregano, so all of the basics, you'll be able to season and flavor your plant-based meats. So if I left anything out, please let me know in the comments below. I'm sure there's a few things that are probably pretty vitally important to making plant-based meats that I didn't put in, the, in this video. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed getting to see a little behind the scenes of my regular kitchen and seeing some of the things that I have in my pantry. If you haven't yet, please make sure you click the subscribe button and click this video right here. This is gonna be one of my ingredient videos. It's gonna be my methylcellulose video. That's a fun video.